By traditional standards, there wasn't much to the Purdue-Wisconsin game on October 30, 1943. The fourth-ranked Boilermakers stayed undefeated by shutting out the Badgers in front of just over 11,000 people in Camp Randall Stadium. It was a sloppy game as the teams combined for 10 turnovers, with the Purdue defense snagging a record five interceptions. Late in the fourth quarter, a touchdown pass from Sam Vacanti to Herb Hoffman put Purdue up 25-0. With about two minutes remaining, Boilermaker head coach Elmer Burnham had a choice to make. Fullback Tony Butkovich was one touchdown away from breaking the Big Ten scoring record. In order to do so, the Boilermakers needed the ball. Burnham called for the onside kick. His team recovered. With seconds remaining, Butkovich plunged through the line for his third score of the afternoon and his 13th in just four Big Ten games on the year. Although there were two conference games left on the schedule, it would be the final carry of the season and of his college career. Butkovich and several of his teammates would ship out the next day for Paris Island to active duty and their greater purpose as officers for the United States Marine Corps. They would all see action and the All-American fullback from St. David, Illinois, would never return. Tony Butkovich was killed at the Battle of Okinawa in the final weeks of the war in the Pacific. But for one glorious autumn, in the fields of West Central Indiana, there was perfection. was an exciting time in West Lafayette, Indiana. Although the Purdue football team struggled to a 2-5-1 record, campus was abuzz with innovation. The Purdue Hall of Music was newly minted, and the new field house was the gym of the athletics department. It was a time of growth and aspiration on campus, but like it did for the rest of the world, that all changed on December 7, 1941. Interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air. President Roosevelt has just announced. The attack also was made. The attack on Pearl Harbor came just as the fall semester was wrapping up. President Edward C. Elliott knew the university's response must be thoughtful and well executed. When he addressed the student body one week later at a special convocation, he challenged them to rise to the occasion and serve their country, whether enlisting or not. The university itself lived up to that challenge as the administration changed the academic calendar to a 12-month schedule with an additional term so that students could complete their studies more efficiently. Students already enrolled in the civilian pilot training program at the university airport were granted up to 30 hours of flying credit by the U.S. Army Air Corps as incentive to join up. The U.S. Navy began offering draft deferments to juniors and seniors, allowing them to finish their studies before heading off to war. Through the draft and volunteers, the United States military grew very big, very quickly. In 1940, U.S. military personnel numbered less than half a million. After Pearl Harbor, that number quadrupled to nearly two million. And a year later, by the end of 1942, it had risen to nearly four million soldiers, sailors, and Marines. With this massive growth came a new problem. The military suddenly needed thousands of new officers to lead these millions of new enlisted men. This led directly to the creation of officer training programs. Among them, the Navy's V-12 program would take men already enlisted in the Navy's college reserves and allow them to continue their university studies with active duty following. More than 130 colleges and universities were selected to be part of the V-12 program, including Purdue. On July 1, 1943, 800 Navy trainees and 450 Marine trainees from around the Midwest reported to Cary Hall and began their new lives. Their days began at 5.45 with Reveille, followed by rigorous exercise of the body, mind, and soul. A select few would spend their idle time on the gridiron, uniting as one of the most powerful football teams in the land and marching into history. <laughs> 